What's going on collectors? This is Parlay J here with you today. And on today's video, I wanted to take you through some of the cards that I've pulled together over the last uh, year for the 1955-56 top set. So I am absolutely in love with this set. I don't normally set build, but these are the two that I am trying slowly over time to set build. And you know, I would like to do it as best I can with graded cards but obviously time and money, and um, it's not always easy to put it together a set like this, um, you know, on some sort of a budget. So I wanted to take you guys through just some of the cards that I've acquired so far. Pretty excited about, I really love this set. I love the, well, both of these sets, I should say, 55 and 56. I love the look and feel. They both look very similar to each other, which is kind of cool. Um, and if you read about some of the history in tops that 55 and 56 were actually some of the sets that really turned the tide with Topps collectors. Um, Topps kind of became a monopoly around that time. They had acquired Bowman, I think it was 54 or 55. And that's really what put them over the top as being like the premier sports card, baseball card specifically producer and their designs were really cool that they all had kind of name at the bottom, the close-up headshot photograph, and then on the opposite side, uh, sort of a player uh, in, in action photograph. It's kind of funny because sometimes I wonder if, are they real pictures, photos, or are they like artist renderings? Because you'll see, if you're not familiar with the sets, what they kind of look like. So I've been, as I said, kind of, kind of just trying to acquire you know, even the commons, and I would, um, I prefer to get commons that are graded a four or better if possible. Um, but again, trying to do this on a budget, so pretty interesting. So I'm gonna take you through what I got. So this stack is everything that I've got so far. So let's start with um, this Leo Kelly on the Boston Red Sox. So you see he's got kind of the photo on the left and then the in action, but there's a background behind it and a gradient on the right and then the team logo, which I think is really cool looking back that in you know the 50s, how the logos have changed so much. So look at this Red Sox logo. It's like sock with a face and a bat and a little hat on up top there. It's kind of funny. So Leo Kelly, and they have like their auto on everyone as well. And so this is interesting too, um, and you'll notice as I go through these, so these sets in particular, um, the 1956 set, had two variations. So they had a what they called a gray back and a white back. And so the white back is this lighter kind of color of the back, and the gray back is darker and it looks just like sort of brown paper almost. But um, they're very cool, and I think on the back it was funny how they had a little comic strip in there. You know, back in these days, um, <laughs> it was actually all about selling bubble gum. And the way that they would improve bubble gum sales was by taking pictures of baseball players and putting them with the gum to entice kids to buy. And then ultimately, Topps found out that, hey, there's more money being a baseball card company than being a bubble gum company. And eventually they removed the gum from the packs, as you, you remember growing up, I'm sure, uh, because collectors were angry that it was ruining the cards. So I'll post some pictures too. Um, I'll put it right here about <laughs> what the, the set looks like, what the box set looked like. And I just love looking at those throwback sets. And I'll post this picture too, right here which is even better, which is a bubblegum machine that you could also get baseball cards from. So I love that, I love seeing that, I love reading about that, very old school, very cool. So there's first card, Leo Kelly, and a lot of these guys, I didn't even know who they were, the commons. Um, our second card is Jerry Lynch, so on the Pittsburgh Pirates, so you see pretty much the same pirate logo on the hat has lasted. And outfield, the same pose, interesting pirates uh, logo there. Um, and you can see on the back, exactly the same. 
We've got Jack Harshman, pitcher on the Chicago White Sox. We've got Corky Valentine, pitcher on the Cincinnati Redlegs. Love that. So it's the Chicago Cubs blue hat with the Cincinnati Reds Red C logo and the classic Cincinnati Red uh, baseball guy up there in the top left. I love how when they have a nickname, they put it in quotes. It's like Corky Valentine. So that's cool. And it's interesting too, because some of these photos of the players look more like real photos than others. So like on Jerry Lynch, it really looks like an artist rendering on the right. But on Corky Valentine on the left, this totally looks like a legit photo. So it's kind of interesting and you wonder if some were and some weren't or whatever. So here's a Wally Westlake, another one that looks like a real photo on the Cleveland Indians. A Jim Rivera outfielder on the Chicago White Sox. It's funny when you look at ball players from this day, they look like the kind of guy that would just be working down at the corner store. And now you look at ball players and they're, you know, gigantic, they're larger than life. So here's a, and I don't even know how to pronounce this, is it Ger Ali or Jer Ali? He is a shortstop on the Pittsburgh Pirates. So this one was pretty bad. I got this one very cheap. It has a tape, scotch tape mark on the top. That's on the card, not the case. And speaking of the backs, let me try to find one. So here's what I was talking about earlier. On the right is the white back and on the left is the um, gray back. And so you can see the difference in shade. It's a lot darker on the left than on the right. And actually, if you didn't know better, you might think the right was a reprint because it's brighter, but it's not. It's just a variation. So here is uh, Dusty Rhodes. So as a wrestling fan, I love this uh, because of the wrestler Dusty Rhodes. And I also love the nicknames from back in the day. So an outfielder on the New York Giants. So another one really cool how it was the, you know, the San Francisco Giants colors with the New York Mets logo back then because it was the New York Giants. And here's a great one that I was really excited to add. So this is Warren Spahn on the Milwaukee Braves uh, pitcher, and he was an excellent player. It's not his rookie. Um, I think it is his second or third year card, but that was a fun pickup to get. Here is a Harmon Killebrew. This is uh, another great player on the Washington Nationals. Um, Killebrew spent a lot of time on the Minnesota Twins, obviously, and I recently had been to Minnesota where they absolutely adore Harmon Killebrew, so it kind of made me want to get this card even more. Pretty good condition. Let's see it read this comic. So true or false, before 1850, a runner was out if he was hit by a thrown ball, and the answer is true. Upside down. So that's kind of fun that they did that. So Harmon Killebrew, another really cool card. Um, Eddie Matthews, Ed Matthews here, Edwin Matthews on the signature on the Milwaukee Braves. So he was a third baseman. That's another one where it could go either way if that's a photo or an artist rendering, not quite sure. This was one that I really wanted to add. It's definitely not in good shape. It's got a big crease on the top right, but this is Ernie Banks on the Chicago Cubs, played shortstop. Um, so this is a really cool card that I really, really did enjoy adding to the set. Um, and I think I said 56 before, but those are all 55 tops uh, cards. And so now we'll jump in mostly to the 56s. So I got a, a bunch of graded ones. So this one was Beckett graded at an eight. So here is Freddie Marsh on the Orioles. That is definitely an artist rendering. Uh, next we have Ray Boone. So now this one's PSA graded on the Tigers and this has got a 4.5. The next one is Chuck Tanner, Milwaukee Braves. This was graded at a 7, PSA 7. That's another one of those white back. And the cool part is too, on the top of these graded cards, it'll say white back or gray back, usually. Uh, 1956, 
Russ Meyer, actually it'll say white back if it's white and it'll say nothing if it's a gray back. So this is Russ Meyer on the Cubs, a PSA 6. This is Jack Meyer on the Philadelphia Phillies, a PSA 6. Harry Dorish on the Baltimore Orioles in a PSA 6, but with a modifier for stained, and I think it's, there's a couple little dots on the front. Nothing drastic. There's really not any stains going on on the back either. Next is a Hoyt Wilhelm. Um, he was a pitcher on the Giants. I think he also spent some time with the Orioles. Uh, I had sent out a Wilhelm card to PSA with my um, 100 card PSA run and I will put the video to that here. So this was a PSA 5. Next we have Mini Minoso. Um, I had never heard of him before this. Outfielder on the Chicago White Sox in a PSA 5.5. Next is Norm Zaukin, first base on the Red Sox in a PSA 5. And so here's that gray back. So it's kind of interesting. Some say gray back, some say white back, and some say neither. So if we look at the gray back on the left and the one that has neither on the right, they're both gray backs. So we learn together. So 56 tops uh, still, we've got Paul Minner and he was a pitcher on the Cubbies. So this is a six with a stain modifier again as well, ST. And I think this was also because there were some spots on the front. I don't see anything really significant on the back or on the front. Next one is Alvin Dark on the New York Giants. And this graded out at a PSA 6. Pretty cool. Uh, Gene Woodling. And that graded out as a PSA 6 as well. Outfielder on the Cleveland Indians. Next is Art Fowler, a pitcher on the Cincinnati Red Legs, aka the Reds. And that graded out as a PSA 6. Uh, next we have New York Yankee catcher Elston Howard, very well known in the New York area. That graded out as a PSA 4. Uh, next, we have pitcher Bob Lemon on the Cleveland Indians. So another guy who is very well known. Uh, that was a PSA 5. And then one of my favorite cards, so this is my only Bobby Thompson card uh, from the Milwaukee Braves. You know, the man the shot her around the world. Um, graded out as a PSA 5. Oh, that little sneer he's got. Good old Robert. Next one is Larry Doby, outfielder on the White Sox. This graded out as a PSA 6 as well. And now for the big guns. Hank Aaron. No discussion needed. Hank Aaron on the Milwaukee Braves. This graded out at a 4.5, so I was very pumped to add this one to my collection. But even bigger. And the crown jewel is the Sandy Koufax Rookie 55 Tops in a PSA 4. Um, I would have liked to get better than this, but it gets very expensive. So this is a very cool card that I am really happy to have in the collection. So that is your Koufax Rookie card along with the Aaron 55 Tops card. So, we have a mix of 55 and 56 tops going on here. Um, I have another one that I actually have on the way and it's the 56 tops Phil Rizzuto. And then, you know, we'll see from there what I can add, but pretty excited, glad to share this with you guys. Um, if you are interested in set building, 55 and 56 tops is definitely, you know, one of the main ones to work with especially if you like vintage and you're into vintage, or if you wanna just kind of break into vintage like I am, start with that and keep an eye on eBay. You can definitely get good, um, good price loose cards just for the common, so you can build out that portion of the set. 
And then keep an eye on your key cards, you know, like your Ernie Banks, like your Aaron, your Sandy Koufax, and just watch them as they fluctuate throughout the year. Koufax has, has been increasing, but um, you know, I would give it a shot after Christmas and some of these cards, they drop in value. Um, it was funny today, I was in my local Target and Walmart and Walgreens uh, just to see what they have on the shelves for cards and the shelves were completely wiped out. I mean, utterly and, and completely wiped out. There's a couple days till Christmas. So typically we'll start to see, we already saw baseball card values decline into the off season and we'll probably see them decline a little bit more even in the January month when people are kind of holding their, reserving their funds um, and we're still in the doldrums of winter and the Super Bowl hype and all that. So, um, very long-winded way of saying, you know, if you're set building, keep your eye out now. Now's the time to look for those really nice cards on eBay and get them at a little bit, potentially, of a discount. So that's my 55 slash 56 um, collection so far. I will post another video as I add to it. And definitely want to know what you guys think. Do you like those 55 or 56 cards? Um, or, or what? What do you think about them? And let's just hold these two side by side so you can see they look super similar in design they obviously just kind of moved around the name of the player and the team but same concept of the headshot and then the more action shot coupled with the team the uh, team logo on some of them um, and the auto but really nice looking the backs kind of similar as well they both have the comic book the comic on there um, it's interesting, they only have the last year, whereas later cards would start to show the whole career worth of stats. So that's kind of another interesting twist too. Um, but looking at them side by side, the differences and the similarities is pretty fun. So I encourage you guys to uh, try to set build yourself. And let me know if you like this set, if you enjoyed this kind of video. If you didn't, let me know as well. Thanks again guys for joining. Until next time, I'm Parlay J. Take care, spike your hair, see you next time.